My name is Marco Munoz. I am Becky Munoz's husband, and I'm here to uh, hopefully inform you a little bit more about this trumpet, and not just this trumpet, but instruments. I guess uh, this instrument, I guess in general. So this is a trumpet. It is in the brass family. It is actually a soprano brass, and uh, it has three valves. And it's got a couple of slides that I go back and forth like this, depending on the notes that I'm hitting, I might have to use them. It does require a mouthpiece, a mouthpiece of my choice. And you can probably tell that not all of it's the same color. And this lead pipe uh, has been modified. Uh, a good friend of mine uh, had this trumpet actually um, custom built. So it's a custom built trumpet. And I cherish it a lot because he's a very dear friend of mine. So I was in fifth grade when I first started playing trumpet, and part of it was because I grew up in a small little town in South Texas named Carrizo Springs, and it's actually in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and so you have to learn to do something as a kid, and my brother was already playing a cornet, and so mom thought, okay, I'll buy him, I'll buy you a cornet as well. So uh, long story short, um, I grew up in a musical family. And uh, my brother plays, my brother Jose, he plays trumpet as well. So, although he's much better than I am. Um, so this trumpet has a bell, and it's got a tuning slide right here. I push it in or push it out depending on, on the pitch and on the tuning of it. And it also on the bell, I can actually modify the sound. So you heard me playing it a second ago um, with, uh, with just, uh, just the bell, but it actually has... Um, some mutes and so this is called a straight mute and this mute goes in here and it actually changes the sound so I'll give you an example so it changes the, uh, the sound not not the pitch but the sound that I, I, I want to create with it and this one a little bit bigger and this one's called a cut mute now this particular cup mute actually I can adjust uh, this the, the cup in it within itself to see how much I can dampen the sound. For now I'm just going to demonstrate it with the, 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 the cup completely expanded and uh, you'll be able to tell the difference. A little quieter, a little more, um, the sound's a little bit more uh, subdued there. And then finally I have this thing here, it's called a Harmon Mute. And this Harmon Mute, actually I can extend um, the cup in it and I can leave it out or I can push it all in depending on how I want the sound to come out. And this one you're going to tell it's going to be a little bit crisper. So, and uh, there's other mutes, I just happen to have these three handy. Uh, but there's um, different kinds of mutes you can put on it to change them. Uh, some people use plungers, uh, uh, plunger caps, and uh, that's used quite a bit in the, in the jazz world, and, and uh, not just jazz, but in ragtime as well that I've seen. And so um, I, I've enjoyed playing trumpet for many, many, many years. Uh, uh, and so what I'm going to demonstrate next, or last, is... Uh, one of my favorite tunes, only because you'll probably recognize it, only because, you know, I just told you where I was from. Lexville Living Room Sound Explorers, brought to you by the Lexington Philharmonic. Today, we're going to be making musical instruments, but not just any musical instruments, instruments that sound like things outside. And we're going to be doing it with stuff you can find in your own home. First, we're going to make a rain stick. A rain stick sounds like rain. And then we're gonna make an ocean drum to sound like crashing waves in an ocean. Do you hear it? Let's get started. First, 
we have to find stuff around our house to make our own instruments. I can find a lot of things around the house that are great for making my instruments, but they don't all belong to me. So I gotta ask people if I can use their stuff. Oh, hey, can I use your shelves? No, okay. Let's figure out how the rain stick works so we can make one of our own. Just like the ocean drum, rain sticks are made by putting something that rolls inside something else. In this case, it's a tube instead of something flat like the ocean drum. But the other thing is, do you see how there's these little bumps along the rain stick? Those are the tops of little nails. That means that something's getting in the way of the thing that's rolling, making it take a lot longer to get from one side to the other and making lots of sound on the way. Let's see if we can tell. Can you tell that they're bumping and hitting things on the way down? Okay, so to make our rain stick, we're gonna need a tube, we're gonna need something that rolls inside the tube, and something to get in the way. Let's see what we can find. To make my rain stick, I'll use a paper towel roll, paper, bendy straws, beans, and colored tape. First, I'll use one piece of paper and cover one end of the tube. Then I'll tape it down. Next, I'll put the bendy straws in the tube. I'll put some facing one way and some facing another way. This will create obstacles for the beans when they go down the tube and help make noise. Now it's time to add the beans. And then the other piece of paper. Now it's time to test it to see if it works. Now it's time to decorate. made their rain sticks. Hi everyone, I'm gonna show you my version of uh, the rain stick that I made from home. So I used a paper towel um, holder. Um, I used plastic from a clear trash bag and rubber bands on both ends. And then I used toothpicks throughout the container um, to disrupt the flow of the beads and buttons that I put on the inside. Now for mine, I found out that it works best if I turn it while I am turning it back and forth. Now you can see that mine's pretty plain. So if you have any paint brush and paint at home, you can decorate your own and we look forward to seeing how your rain stick turns out. Hi, I'm Evelyn, and for my rain stick, I used my favorite snack, which are cheese balls. As you can see, I already ate half of it, and I decorated a little bit with some lines. Um, so I'm gonna put it sideways in my lap, and I'm just gonna roll it real slow. If you listen close, 
sounds like hail or really big raindrops. Oh, kitty, get ready for the rain. Before we make our own, we have to figure out how ocean drums actually work. The top looks like a normal drum, but we know it's not. To really see what's happening, we have to flip it over. Ocean drums make sound by having something that rolls inside of something that will make it even louder. See if you can see the beads roll across as I tilt the drum. Did you see them? Look again. Okay, so first we have to find something that rolls. Then we have to find something to put that in. Let's see what we have. Okay, we're ready to get started. To make my ocean drum, I chose to use an empty cereal box, dried beans, colored tape, and crayons. First, I'll make sure the cereal box is completely empty. Then, I dump in my dried beans. Then, I'll close it up with a piece of colorful tape. And now, I get to decorate it. I'm all finished. Let's see how it sounds. Just like the ocean, right? This is how I made mine. But you can make yours any way you want to with whatever you have around your home. Let's see how my friends, Chase and Evelyn, decided to make their ocean drums. Hi everyone, my name is Chase Miller. Um, and I'm going to show you the ocean drum that I made today. So I just used a uh, pie pan and I used a little bit of a clear trash bag and I taped it on the bottom as tight as I can get it. And then I used little beads um, and buttons that I had around my apartment and put them in the uh, pie pan. And then if you move it around slowly, You get the sound of the ocean drum. And if you move around fast. And the with the pie container, the ripped part that's in the inside makes it a little bit louder with the material that I have. I look forward to seeing your ocean drum. Hi, I'm Evelyn. And for my ocean drum, I put rice in a metal pan. Um, and you're just and I also taped some plastic over top of it so none of it can escape. And I'm just gonna move it around real slow, like you move it on fast, it's like big crashes. But if you do slow, it's just calm waves over a sandy beach. The Lexington Philharmonic wants to see pictures and videos of the instruments that you made. You can email those to us at education at lexville.org. The Lexington Philharmonic is a pillar of music education in the state of Kentucky. We need your help now more than ever. To donate to the Philharmonic, visit www.lexville.org. Until next time, sound explorers. Hi, it's Miss Becky, and I'm coming to you from my house again. And I'm standing next to one of the things that I value the most in our house, and it's a piano. And the piano is an instrument, and inside this lid, which you keep down so the cats don't walk on the keys, these are the keys, and this is how you play a piano. Now, my husband can play the piano. I learned a little bit when I was a child because I learned to play clarinet, and it's the same scale.
But this book is about someone who decided to really, really learn to play music because she was inspired. And the title is Because. And the words are by Mo Willems. And the pictures are by Amber Wren. And this book is published by Hyperion Books for Children. This is how it happened. Because a man named Ludwig wrote beautiful music, a man named Franz was inspired to create his own. Because many years later, people wanted to hear Franz's beautiful music, they formed an orchestra. And because a man had practiced since he was a kid, he was asked to join. Because a woman had studied night and day, she too was asked to play. And because many others loved and practiced their instruments, there were enough musicians. Because someone created a poster about Franz's music, tickets were sold. And because the train conductor stopped the train on the grand, at the Grand Concert Hall, the orchestra conductor arrived. Because the orchestra librarian had copies of the score, the orchestra rehearsed. And because workers checked the lights and the seats and swept the floors, the grand hall was ready. Because the time had come, the ushers opened the doors. Because someone's uncle had caught a cold, someone's aunt had an extra ticket for someone special. Because the usher helped the aunt and her special guest, they found their seats. And because everyone was there to hear beautiful music, it was quiet. In row C, seat 14, sat the girl with the uncle's ticket. She heard the beautiful music written by the man named Franz, and it changed her. The girl was changed. From that moment on, the girl learned everything she could about music because it fed her. Soon she started to write music too. And you can see here she's playing piano, and here she's playing violin, and here she's playing flute. Because like Franz, the young woman had something to share. Over time, the woman became very good because she worked very hard. One night, her music was discovered because she was also very lucky. And then she was invited to perform her music at the Grand Concert Hall because many people wanted to hear it. Her composition was dedicated to the uncle in row C, seat 14 because it was his ticket that had brought her here. And that night, someone else was changed. So this little boy was inspired by the music he heard. And the name of the symphony is The Cold. And there's the music. So 
So Mo Willems is most famous for writing the books about Knuffle Bunny and the Pigeon, but he must be inspired by music too, to have written this book. So I hope that you hear some music that inspires you and that you work very hard to become very good at something. But already by reading and using your imagination, you've got a good start on that. Thanks for listening.